following inside, here he says, this is the last argument of Yiftach. The Shabbos Yisrael b'Cheshbon u'Bivneisel. The Yidden have been sitting here, have been living here in Cheshbon and the neighboring areas, the neighboring towns. Uva'ar oir u'Bivneisel, and Aron and its neighboring towns. Uva'chol ha'arim ayashar ayidei Aron and all the other cities in the, in the river valley of Aron. We've been living together for shloish me'ayishana for three hundred years. So this is, Yiftach is saying, what are you guys, Mitam all coming out of nowhere? It's been 300 years that we've been living here. Nobody ever came to bother us. You suddenly cut, what's going on? What's, what's this all about? So this kind of, the Palestinians can say that from day one, they meet in Saudi Arabia, Israel. They have never agreed that Eretz Israel should exist. They always, from day one, have been trying to fight us and all the other countries around us, Egypt and Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, and further away, Saudi Arabia and Iraq, all those, Iran, all those countries have always had the same thing. So that's the only time they could say we never agreed to it. But the first three times has applied. Now, this 300 years that Yiftach mentions, um, Vladimir Mefarshim used this as an opportunity to give uh, the history of what's going on from when the Yidden came to Eretz Yisrael in this time, because in general, whenever there's numbers in Tanakh, but a lot of times, um, uh, uh, rounded up to the nearest number, a lot of times no re- numbers overlap, a lot of times it's not so clear if this comes after this. So we hear the Mefarshim will use the opportunity to point out when it is. I just want to show an interesting about the year we are now, is the year, right now we are on Pei Tov Shin, Pei Dalit. The story of Yiftach is almost exactly 3,000 years ago, almost to, almost to the year. It's 2,990 Seven ninety-eight of the Chazor. The Chazon is like this. The Chazon, all the older Mefarshim, is, they, they all discussed how you calculate three hundred, and they basically he showed was leader of the Nasi of the Yidden for twenty. This is a basic list of all the basic shaykhs that were there. He showed us for twenty-eight years after he showed us a Sneil Ben Knaz for forty years. Eilud Ben Gera, the famous one, which maybe after we do Yiftach, maybe we'll learn about Eilud. That's a fun story for a lot of people. Uh, he was for 80 years, then it was Shamgar Ben Anos, it doesn't mention how long he was, that's a question you have not found out here for itself. Devoira together with Borat for 40 years, then seven years of Midian, meaning this is a machlekes amongst the Mavarshim, because in all these people, it says how many years the neighboring country was making them tsarist, whether it was Maya or Midian or, or Amin or Blish, or whatever it might have been, and, and it, it always just, it, it's hard to know if those years are separate or included. So the Ashish way of learning it is, in the seven years of Midian, there was no official leader amongst the Yidden. And then afterwards, Yidden took over for 40 years. The son of Imalach, whatever, however good or bad he was, he was for three years. Then there was a guy, Toila, for 23 years. Yoyer for 22 years. And then for 18 years, there's no official leader amongst the Yidden. And that's when Yitzchak comes in. And only after Yitzchak comes, Shemshot. It's only after you. So, but from here to here, as if you calculate the numbers, it equals to 300. We're not going to do the math right now. You can do it yourself. So, the 300 years was when Yeshua began. What year did Moshe Rabbeinu conquer Abraham Yarden, which is when they, when they came out of, out of the Midbar? It was what year was that? 248. 248. 2488. Right? Because Mountain Tayyip was 2448. They were in the Midbar for 40 years. So, 248. 2448 plus 40 is 2488. How would you say that in, in Lashon Kodesh and Oseis? 2488 would be Beis. Beis Alafim. Tov. Beis. Ches. Beis Tov Pei Ches. If you add 300 to Beis Tov Pei Ches, it ends up being Tov Shun Pei Ches. So it's tough, right now with Tov Shun Pei Dalit. So it's basically four years, and four years from now we're going to celebrate the 3,000 year anniversary of the Battle of Yiftah. So it's uh, almost to the numbers. It could be slightly, you have some version calculated slightly differently. So like I said, it's 2996, 97, 98, there's different ways of saying it. But it's almost exactly 3,000 years ago. The Holy Spirit, that's an interesting thing to know about what ended up happening. Now, Pasuk of Zion Yiftah finalizes after all these kindness, after all these proofs, he now finishes off by saying, I didn't do anything to you. We've been living here comfortably, quietly, calmly for the past 300 years. He says it about himself, I, because already at this point, Yiftach has the backing of Klaus Yisrael. He is their leader, as we spoke earlier, all the negotiations he had with the Skanim, that they gave him the, the, the opportunity to be the Katsin and the Reish. So he's speaking on, on his own behalf.
presented it on Kali Yisrael, I didn't do anything bad to you. You're being, you're, you're starting up with me. It's, it's, it's wrong. You have no reason to start up with me. It's bad. It's wrong of you. And he concludes, Hashem should judge between us. Hashem knows that you are in the wrong. I'm in the right. And therefore, Hashem will definitely stick up for those that are right. And this is my uh, my message to you. So if we remember at the beginning, uh, uh, the king of Amain just sent one little it was one little line, it was one pasuk. That was only one pasuk, it was a few words of a complaint, where he basically said, this is my land. And Yiftach goes on and on with four tinnies, with details, his history, Moving everything, and here we said this is this is like similar to what the Palestinians they just chanting, chanting, chanting. They're not saying anything that makes sense. La Abdel the Yidden are responding with the history, with international law, with from from all perspectives how we have the right to Israel, v'chulu v'chulu. And over here also the same response they expect from these Palestinians, these Arabs, the Machshemam, Pasuk Kaches, v'loy shama melech bnei Amin al divrei Yiftach, bnei melech bnei Amin did not listen to what Yiftach said. Asher shalach elov, Yiftach sent him a, a very proper message. Very diplomatic, going according to being careful, doing things properly. Melech bin Amin was not interested. So now Yiftach knows that a war is inviolable. So this also happens by the Yidin in, the, in, in the, this, the current situation. So in all the wars, we said all the wars that happened in the Eretz Yisrael since 1948 have been wars of defense. The Eretz Yisrael never went out of the street to try to wage a war for no reason with any of the countries around the Eretz Yisrael. And always the other, the other side started. Now, the Six Day War, the Six Day War, officially the Yidin shot the first bullet, we're the ones that started. And that's because Mitzrayim had been threatening and threatening and saying, we are going to conquer Eretz Yisrael. They sent all the, the whoever was the other peacemakers, Kibyachal, other countries, other international that wanted to make peace in the region. Egypt said, everyone move out of here, we're conquering Eretz Yisrael. So it was obvious that they're going to conquer. And that's why Eretz Yisrael ended up going first. And the pile, because of that, there was a big miracle, and besides the strategy part. By the Yom Kippur War, they did not listen to what the Rebbe was saying, that they should go ahead and do that, and that's why there was a lot more loss of life, unfortunately, on the, on the Yiddish side. But Cholifin, here, Yiftach understands what's going on. He understands that there's going to be a war. Bnei Amin are going to attack. And the rule always is, whoever attacks first has an advantage. It's not an iron rule. Of course, there are times when a country attacks, and they still lose the battle, but it's, of course, very important when you have the first attack, you have the advantage. You're you're maneuvering the the battle, the war, the way you want it to be. And Yiftach, besides as I mentioned this before, he already had a lot of strategy, a lot of experience in battles. We don't know exactly what kind of battles he was doing, but it's clear that he was a warrior. He was a Giber Chayil. He had been living around. And by the way, some say the land of Toiv was somewhere around here where he had been living before. So from so far as he's what's going on, he knows the region. He knows he knows what's happening. At this point. He's right now in this area, more with, with Amin. Because uh, Amin is around here, everything is unclear 100%. Amin is around here, east of Eretz Yisrael. The Yiftach is around here, negotiating with them, sending messages back and forth. And now, Yiftach decides, okay, I have, to, I, I have to start. I'm gonna wait for him, it's gonna be a tragedy. So that's gonna be a, a loss of life to the Yidin. So therefore, Vatehi al Yiftach Ruach Hashem. This is important words that a spirit of Hashem descended upon Yiftach. Which means he had godly encouragement right now. He felt, so it's not like we have by Shimshon, we said it a few times, he had this kind of special adrenaline of God's adrenaline, which gave him that, that supernatural powers. We don't say the same thing by Yiftach. He didn't suddenly become a superman, but Yiftach had something special, godly, and that guided him in the right direction to go and wage the battle the right kind of way. So the Pasuk says, what he did was, he strategically, he went towards the Gilad and Menashe, this area, and from there, somewhere around here, there's a city called Mitzvah, or an area called Mitzvah, Gilad, we said Mitzvah is an overlook, you go to the highways, so you always have a, a, a scenic overlook, in different places where you can oversee a lot of the valleys, mountains, whatever it may be, so there's an area called Mitzvah Gilad, Umi mitzvah gilad of our bnei Amin. And he ended up coming from behind the bnei Amin. And he went, Nazi didn't approach their soldiers, he rather approached their cities, which were less fortified, because it's understood that all the soldiers were more in this direction, expecting Yiftach to come from here, they would find to charge the west where he saw. So Yiftach smartly went around them and ambushed them from behind. And this way, he was obviously a pita, but that was the explanation. But the main reason for this tremendous victory was the fact that Ruach Hashem. 
And now comes the famous, famous, tragic story everybody knows about Yiftah, whoever doesn't know, pay attention, it's uh, one of the biggest stories of the whole, of, whenever people talk about Yiftah, they focus on the following story. Till now we spoke a lot of things about Yiftah, but uh, it's, 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 most people don't focus upon that. We're going to focus now on, the, the, on this, the main story. And that is as follows. Vayidar Yiftach neder la Hashem vayoymar. Yiftach makes a neder to Hashem before he goes out to battle. And this happens a lot of times when a person is trying to go into something and he knows that he's in a bad place. He wants to make a special achlot of favor from Hashem, a special promise to Hashem that I'm going to, Hashem, you help me, I'm going to help you. So it's a, it, here Yiftach makes this neder. And remember, Yiftach is coming from a background that he's not such a big... Uh, uh, a rebbe, as we would say, right? He was coming from a background as he was a Ben Ishazayno, he was chased away, he was a Giber Chayil, and now he's suddenly uh, the leader of Tal Yisrael, and he's their warrior, and he's their uh, guarantee to be their Reish, their Kotsin, basically their Shafit. So he has the Ruach Hashem upon him, but he, he really is, in a way, very grateful to Hashem, but he wants to make it even stronger. Some of the say that he was looking forward to a tremendous miracle and to have a Yom Tev afterwards also. So he wanted to make it something very, very special, very exciting, and therefore he tells Hashem, Vayimar, he tells Hashem, I'm neder, Im no so in titeines b'nei am in biyodi, Hashem, if you do this for me, and I'm coming now from this, like a, this, uh, out, this outcast, from the lowest, the lowest of the low, terrible lineage, terrible yichas that I have, and being thrown out of Kali Yisrael and all the way for all this time. You're going to not, you already made me so, so successful now, I already have this position now. But of course, if I lose this battle, then what, what, what did I gain from all this? Well, a few moments of, of, of glory. But if Hashem, if you make me, make me win this battle, that means I'm really going to the lowest of the low to the top of the top. So Hashem, this is amazing. So if you make me do this, if you, if you make me successful in this battle, I, 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 I can't, it's the best, and the best of the best. And he says, I pre, I'm promising you the following. So he says, I'm going to come home. Yiftach, Yiftach had the, it doesn't say how wealthy he was, but it's understood that he was, especially now that he made him in charge. He obviously had wealth, and those times wealth always equaled agriculture, which means a lot of animals, a lot of sheep, a lot of goats, a lot of cows. He had a lot of those stuff. So he says, Hashem, I'm going to come home. The first animal that comes out, the first thing that comes out of my house, I'm going to bring it as a carbon to Hashem and thank you for what you did to me. So I'm going to bring a carbon and this is like Hashem, I'm doing it 100% the best possible way. Just let me make me win this battle and I'll bring you carbonus and we'll make afterwards and we'll make Yom Yom Tevin. So he's all, Hashem, I'm all yours. I'm giving whatever I have. It's all for you. It could be also, there's a famous story and, and, and it's a, a verse. It's the, the story of Yaakov Avinu. When Yaakov meets Yosef for the first time after the 22 years that he didn't see him, so after the 22 years that Yaakov didn't see Yosef, so it says that when Yaakov finally met Yosef, so what was Yaakov doing at the time? Yosef was hugging Yaakov, and Yaakov was saying Shema. So there's a famous explanation. Yaakov couldn't have a better time to say Shema. He couldn't say Shema a few minutes before, a few minutes after. So the famous explanation is that Yaakov, <coughs> that Yaakov said, and the, the, the excitement that I'm going to have right now of seeing Yosef after 22 years, such an excitement I never had in my life, and I'll never have again. It's such a special, special occasion that I'm going to feel such a special happiness of seeing my beloved son that I didn't see in 22 years. <clears throat> so Yaakov said, what am I going to do with this tremendous feeling, this excitement, this inspiration that I'm going to have? What should I do with it? I should just enjoy it myself and be happy and cry. He said, no, I'm going to take that excitement. I'm going to give it to Hashem. So Yaakov purposely waited for the moment that he's going to see his son Yosef, and the moment that he saw him, right away, he said Shema, and he basically, all of the excitement that he had, he directed it towards Hashem. I saw a video going around a few weeks ago, one of the soldiers coming back from Gaza, so, so he, went, he went to his father, his father said he was learning in the Kailo, his father didn't know he's coming home, his father was what's going on with him, and he walks into the base medish, or with a video, and instead of having that song that plays in the background all the time, he walks over to his uh, father, he says, excuse me, sir, Father looks up and he sees him and oh, it's exciting to see your son. It's every person that goes to Gaza is, is uh, coming back. Obviously, it's a big time of It's just we were stuck on the sofa. So he says, the father gets up with a big uh, excitement. Obviously, he hugs his son and then after a few moments, he says, my son come up here and the So that father is a Tamil Chacham, obviously. So he's not Yaakov of Hinu, he's not on that level, but it's obvious that he's trying to copy that word. That excitement it took him a few moments till he re remembered, but he gave it to Hashem also. 
So it's very possible Yiftach has the same idea. Hashem, I'm going to come back. I'm going to be on the high, the highest high that I ever had in my life. So spiritual, so exciting. Hashem, I'm going to take this excitement, bring a carbon for you and put that off to Hashem. It's going to be all part of my excitement. I'm giving it all for you. It's all for you for Hashem. Then, Pastor Glamad Beis tells us, indeed, this whole nether was right before he's about, right before he entered the attack, right before that, which also because you see a lot of times before the soldiers go in, they have special pet talks, special the Kitrum Yidin, the Siddish Yidin, they are saying Ramas, whatever, Ramam Kitas, they're saying older in Yonin, is a one of the scary stories of a few, a few weeks ago, only about a few months ago, that there's a picture of one of the one of the soldiers learning Ramam the day he was killed. And that the day he was learning Ramam still was a Khayeno, or Ramakas, whatever, and about that day he was killed. A different guy was killed. A few, a few pictures like that. One of the Islam. Well, he's about to enter the actual battle, which is going to be now, which is his first official battle in the capacity of the general, the leader, and he makes a special nether, and he's all pumped up, and indeed he goes into Bnei Yamin, Vayitne Mashem Biyode. Hashem gives him his hand, and it's a complete victory. It doesn't say details, but the Pasuk, meaning uh, casualties on both sides, but the Pasuk says, Vayakim Me'aroyer Va'adbayach Minis Esrim Ir. So these are names of cities in this area of Amain. Arayah Tabayah, Tabayah, Tabayah means until Minis. Twenty cities. He conquered twenty cities, village and town after town. Vaad Avil Kromim till the place called Avil Kromim, which was and it was a Makkah Gdoyla Mo'ay. A tremendous victory, a tremendous conquest. It doesn't say how many people of Amin were killed. It doesn't say if any Yidin were killed. The assumption is no Yidin were killed. There must have been miraculous, a tremendous victory. And the Yamin were knocked down. They understood that we got it wrong, that they, they basically don't mess with the Jews. Yiftach, as he said, is on the highest hog. He has this battle. He's coming from the lowest of the low. He's so excited. He made this net to Hashem. And Pasuk Lamedalev. Yava Yiftach Hamitzvah Beisah. Yiftach is finally coming after this battle. So excited, coming back to the mitzvah. His, his house is more in this area. He's coming back home, and he remembers his nether. I'm going to bring the carbon to Hashem. Now, whatever comes out of my house, the first thing, carbon to Hashem. His daughter walks out of his house. This Sufi Mugim Khaylu. She also knows her father's background. She also knows what her father went through. She knows that her father, she grew up with her father before. She knows her father was an outcast. She knows all of her uncles hate her father. She knows that her grandparents are always looking down on her father. She was chased away. And now her father was brought back. And he becomes the Nos. And he's the big knocker. And he wins the battle. She's so excited. She comes out running. The Subi Mohim Khaila. She's okay, having the tambourines. And she's dancing all excited. And the Prophet tells us, She was his only daughter. He didn't have any other children. She was single. She was never married. And he sees her. He sees her daughter coming out. And it's the biggest crash from the highest to high to the lowest low. Like he cries the daughter. He rips his clothing. Everyone's with him. All these people around him. Like, you know, it's exciting. Let's go dance and everything. He's crying, ripping his clothing. He calls out to his daughter. Oh my goodness, my, my daughter. What did you do to me? You have just made me fall so low. You have just, just, just destroyed everything. I, I was so, I was, I was, everything was perfect. Everything was going the best possible way it can go. My, my life couldn't have been better. And now it couldn't have been worse than it is right now. It couldn't have gotten worse than the situation the way it is now. It's, this is, you, you knock me down. He says, and it's not Sam, you're the one that's messing me up. You're the one, you're doing this terrible thing to me. Of course, you didn't mean to, but that's what he's saying. And he continues and he says, I open my mouth to Hashem. I can't I can take my word back. I'm a man of my word. This is, again, similar to the mafia. A man of my word. I made a, I made a promise. I told Hashem, anything comes out of my house. Yes, I meant an animal, but I said the words. Anything. I'm making it into a carbon oil, and and I gotta do it. I I don't I, I don't play games. Whatever I say, I say. And as terrible as this is going to be, this is what I got in. And this is the way. There's a lot more to talk. We're only starting the story now. We're gonna get there's a lot a lot of tradition over here. But we're gonna, we're saying the story according to the traditional mikra, according to what Chazal teaches us, and the many different versions. Huh? You only had, remember, in those times, everyone had agriculture. Lahadul today, people have dogs and cats in their houses. 
in those times it seems to be that it was normal. It also could be he meant out of the whole campus where he lived at this point. He had a lot of barns, he had a lot of pens, whatever they were. And his assumption was for sure animals are constantly running around and it's probably going to be one of the, the sheep, goats, or cows. He had no idea. He had I mean, wildest dreams. He didn't think it's going to be his daughter, obviously. But now he made a promise. He made this vow. He said, yeah, I have to do it. And she, the daughter of Yiftach, she responds to him, Avi, <laughs> you opened your back to Hashem, you gave your word. I'm the daughter of a Matthew man. I know what this means. I know how it works by you guys. I accept. I'm, 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 I'm courageous enough to take it. You'll do to me what you said you're going to do. You want to sacrifice me as a sacrifice to Hashem? Whatever comes of your mouth, you can do. Hashem did all these miracles for you. Hashem made this tremendous victory over Bnei Amin. And Hashem obviously wants me to be the carbon because he made the nether and Hashem orchestrated events. I should come out. It must be this is what Hashem wants. I'm accepting it. However, she says, she tells her father, I only have one request before you go ahead and bring me as a carbon. Give me two months. I want to go to the mountains. Now, I want to go to the mountains. I want to just go to places to seclude myself with nature for a bit. I want to cry about myself, about the terrible tragedies going to happen. Sulai means the fact that I'm never going to get married and have children because I'm going to be killed right now. I want to go with my friends and we'll inspire each other and give each other a chizuk, even though I'm going through such a rough time now. But give me two months and then you'll do what you probably said you're going to do. And indeed, he told her you can go. She went for two months. She and her friends went. She cried with her friends in the mountains. And then, two months later, she returns to her father. He, gave, he fulfilled the vow that he had vowed. Now, the pastor continues a few more words. She had never got married, and this was, it was a chayk amongst the youth. Now, I'm telling the story the way Chazal tells you the story, which is tragic, which is sad, which is, everyone goes on and on and on about the story. However, there's another way of learning the story, which many of them, the Farshim, explain. And so, first of all, there's a lot more to talk about in this way. There's so much questions and then discussion. And then there's the other way of learning it, which also has questions and discussion, but a lot less. But I think that we'll, uh, we'll leave that for next time to go through all the back and forth. I wanted to make a, a few short announcements before, uh, before Midas. Um, so first of all,